Okay. So that is one way. It's really hard, right? I know. Do you need to push the feet to the sides? No, you don't need to, but it's hard to get a grip if they don't move the sides. So, okay. Now, if I didn't want to do it in a squat, I could also do it here. But my elbows have to be low. If my elbows are high, it doesn't work. Okay, so. My, okay, so you got to say hi, so I did to you today. Yeah? It woke you up, right? Yeah? Okay. Because you want to touch someone on the side for waking them up. That's very uh, safe. The side of the foot is, is connected to the side of the body, but this is connected to the inner part of the body. That's a different world. Okay, so thumbs in. Now, what my goal in the foot massage is to press the bottom of the feet straight forward. I'm not going down, I'm going forward. As if I'm pressing through her feet. Okay? In order for me to do that, I have to have my elbows very low. Okay? And there's two ways of doing it. So if their arms are forward and you want to do this on them, you need to show them what to do. Okay? Make sense? Okay. Well now we start. Here's our hello. I'm here. You don't want to just scare the crap out of them. They don't know. You know what I mean? So here. Okay, now, little lift and a squeeze into the lift. Turn my head so I don't breathe on her. And now I'm just going to hold and let her breathe. Now, in your cases today, you're going to, and even in class, you can ask this person. You can, you can ask. You say, hey, how's that? Is that too much? Is that okay? And get the feedback. How is that, by the way? Perfect. Okay, we like perfect. So then we hold it. Now I can keep teaching the whole class. I can be like, walk your entrance. In this case, the entrance, my first touch, will be to the heart. Maybe some gentle circular massage. Remember, always, always circles are clockwise. Okay? No matter what. That's the way the chakras go. Okay, so this might be my first touch. Now Gonna move her hair so we can see something. I need everybody to be able to see her neck. And if you cannot see her neck, then try to squeeze in even more and even into this area so that this neck can be visible. Okay. Now, do you notice that right now her neck has no wrinkles in the skin, right? Just absolutely neutral. See that? You notice that it, I won't do it, but if I were to in any way start pushing down, do you see how the wrinkles are starting to come? Yes. See that? Okay. Well, what's happening uh, on the skin is happening below the skin. So if I do this wrong and I push down, I am going to crunch her neck into the ground. So what I'm now going to teach you about this skill is that we will be avoiding that. We will avoid that with the following. So here's number one. Now, we're going to give a gentle lift. Not to maintain this lift at all times. This will stay. Now, the squeeze will be isolated only in my hand while the lift remains. Never, ever will I push down on her. Do you see that? Well, I'm not doing this because I'm lifting and squeezing into my own lift. So in this case, the action is isolated into my hand. Can you see that idea? And never is there a downward action. And I will stay here as long as I can. In fact, the longer I stay, the happier she is. Right? Is that true? Or is it too much? It's okay. Oh, stop. Okay. Let's say, for example, that I'm here, right? And then I tell her, lift one leg, okay? Go ahead now, lift one leg. And she lifts that leg on that side. Now, I'm not going to do this from here. I'm going to walk around, and I'm going to get to the other side. But I am not going to walk around like this. Oh, no. I'm going to walk clear around that foot, because I don't know what she's really going to do. And as I'm walking around, she could decide to just jump right up. And then, take your right leg up first. And don't, and don't do it. But you see, if I go this way, and she decides to jump up, I'll break my wrist. See that? She'll just jump right into my hand. 
So I have to be aware of every, you know, come down with us. There's a very perfect rule about driving that you can use in yoga. Do you know what the rule about driving is? Expect people to do the stupidest thing they could ever do every moment. Yes. It's true and everywhere. Expect the stupidest, worst, most unconscious <laughs> thing in every moment, and then you'll basically be ready. And the same thing for this. So expect them to do the, the worst things, the, the hardest jumps, the everything that you don't want, and be ready. I let go. I let her do whatever she wants. She will not fall to the side. I've never seen that. When she's done, she'll fall the way that she came, okay? She can play that game if she wants to. But here's the thing. I think you know this. You can do forearm stand for the, with the wall for uh, approximately the rest of your natural born life. And you want to know when you're going to get off the wall? When? Absolutely never. Never, never, never. Because this is not a pose that you learn by doing the pose. This is a pose that you learn by having the strength to do the pose. <laughs> it's not a technique, it's a, it's a capacity. Okay, so that makes sense. Now peacock is the opposite of that. Peacock, you can't learn it unless you do it. It's just one of those things, you gotta do it and then you'll build the muscles and know that. But this is so much. So you don't build so much jumping against the wall, right? So it's fun, and I do enjoy jumping us to the wall, and even with handstand, you know what's a really fun practice for you guys, is to make this cardio. How would you make, how would you make forearm stand against the wall into cardio? Well, you take a stopwatch, <laughs> and you'd be like, three minutes, click, jump up against the wall. <sighs> three minutes of forearm stand. Now you're sweating, you're breathing, da, 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 da. Well, then you could use the wall to take it to a higher physical capacity, but that still is not going to build your capacity to do the pose. Everyone clear about this? Yeah. So this is fun for people, so we help them do it, but we know better than to imagine that they're going to learn well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can go away. Now, a few things here. Um, first of all, no saltas. Si uno no hace nada hasta te eso, okay? Now, what we're going to do, not sneeze, excuse me. What we're going to do is get her in a position, and like in her, in her dolphin position. I should have taught you that first. Okay, so go into downward dog. Even though she has tight hamstrings, she's going to be crazy for this. Go ahead. Dolphin. There. Good. Okay, so this is dolphin. Anyone can do this. This is easy, but don't let them jump. <laughs> now. Lift one leg up, only one. Okay. So this is how they're going to start. You're not. This. They're not jumping. Forearm stand. You help them. No jump. They lift a leg. Now your job is to grab the ankle and help them put the foot onto the wall. Once you have their foot on the wall, your job is to let go and leave them alone. Now I'm going to tell you something that is incredibly important for every single time you, you relate to this pose. You can hold one leg all day long. She will never get nervous. You can hold this forever. She doesn't care. Why? Because she doesn't care? Because if she wants to, she can bring that leg down. Okay? Come back. One leg up. Now, the thing about this, is I have to use strength. This is not like weak, one leg up. I'm not going to leave up. Good. So I have to be strong here, okay? Because this is her whole body. Mm -hmm. Now, what I do not ever want to do is that. This makes her feel, how do you feel? Uh, no. Terrible? Yeah. Yes, terrible. Okay? Because if you feel trapped, your brain goes very nervous. Right? You're just like, no! Yeah, made me out immediately. One leg, nothing. Two legs, terrible. Okay? This is every time. Let's go to someone else. Sway. 
forearm stand, probably like this, but I don't know because it wasn't there. But the person jumped up and elbow slipped out and she broke her shoulder in the middle of the class. That's fun. Okay, so this is why towels, this is why you don't tolerate unsafe environments and puddles and sweat and slippery and, okay, everything matters. This stuff happens, okay? So, so, keep, so you want to be able to, like, if you're looking down at this person, you should not be seeing the elbows going wider than the shoulders. There should not be an outer angle. It should not be like an eyesight. It should be going straight down, okay? Then, last thing is, the person has to look up. Okay, there's all the things I'm coaching you guys. But, but before I get to that point, the shoulders, guys, okay, I'm teaching you all this stuff individually, but the shoulders cannot go forward. As soon as they do, you can just forget it. Okay, the shoulders have to stay over the elbows. Put a space there, yeah. Um, and so, and then looking up. Okay, not looking down. Look down and flip. Okay? Makes sense? Right? So, uh, what I've been telling you guys is that the legs have to stay straight. Okay? Even if you stay here, that's fine. But when you come into the pose, you're coming into a backpack. Okay? Makes sense? That's all so as. You can see it. Control. Through so much. So, so, so you need to jump every time? Yeah. Maybe you don't, know, with your extremely open hamstring. No, because some teachers told me that you, you can um, up one leg. Like, like, yeah, only, with only very, very open hamstrings, is what I'm saying. Okay. You know, like the girl in the weekend group, Naki, who's like a, a ballet dancer. <laughs> she just, she can go like, I mean, you can lift her leg all the way up, you know, and then just, you know, 